Hello everyone, I'm Heather Peterson and I'm here today in the Riley Blake Design Studios and I'm going to be doing a couple demos for you while I'm here. And just to tell you a little bit about me, I design patterns under the name of Ancus Treasures. So I do patterns and books and here's a couple of my newer titles. Um, I love to do table runner books so this is my Trendy Table series and Trendy Table 3 is my most current book. So hopefully a few of you recognize those books. And the reason I'm here today is I'm also a fabric designer for Riley Blake. So this is my most current collection here called Winter Wonder. So I'm from Minnesota, so I, I do love uh, all things winter and we have winter for five months out of the year. So there's inspiration around me for winter themed fabric lines for yeah, quite a few months out of the year. And I'm also going to be demoing today using this collection. So the pattern I'm going to be demoing is called Spinners. That's this pattern. And I'm going to share one of my favorite things about quilting and that's 60 degree angles. So my goal is that by the end of this little session, you will be comfortable and confident enough to tackle and sew a few 60 degree angles. So you will find that it opens up a whole new world for you of things you'll be able to do if you can sew those 60 degree angles together. So um, I, my love of uh, 60 degree angles extends into a few other members of my family as well. In fact, when my oldest son, who's now 10, went off to preschool and they you know, do the testing where they say, do you know what a square is and a circle is? And he kind of impressed them by knowing what a hexagon was and what a 60 degree angle was as well. So we had that talk early on in life about what the cutest, most important angle is in quilting. And so um, that's part of the reason why I love 60 degree angles as well. So um, that pattern is found in my On the Run Again book, which is also another one of my table runner books. And what we're gonna start out with first is a few tips for doing the cutting and simplifying that process. So we are going to be using the Creative Grids 60 degree triangle ruler. Now this is a very common ruler, a lot of you have it, but if you don't, you can use any 60 degree angle as long as it has the little flat top. If you have a pointy top, that's going to change your numbers on things. So you wanna make sure you have a ruler that has the little flat top. So that's what you need to get started with. Let me grab my fabric here and we can slide this out of the way. So we are going to begin by cutting these background triangles here, these 60 degree triangles. And we have a five inch strip cut and we have our ruler and I'm going to be using the 28 millimeter rotary cutter. And the reason that I use this is it's small and easy to maneuver. You can easily see around the tip of the ruler when you're cutting. And we are going to use the five inch line on our ruler, line that up with the fabric and cut around the tip of that ruler. Then you can flip your ruler the other direction and make another cut. And that will give you your 60 degree triangles. So those are very easy to cut. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about cutting the background and we're gonna start by cutting this hexagon here in the center. Now you don't need um, a special ruler to do that. In the book there is a template for it but you can also use this ruler just by laying it on top figuring out what lines on the ruler correspond to the lines on the template. And then we're going to take a five inch strip of our background fabric here and then you're going to go to the iron and you're going to press that in half so you have a strip that looks like this. Then you're going to lay the fold next to you and you're going to lay that line that you figured out by laying it on the template. So um, I'm going to go right here. Then we're going to cut on either side of the template again. And when you open up that fabric with the fold, you have cut your perfect hexagon. So very simple and easy to do. And you can just take your ruler and keep cutting across. The only difference is this time you're not going to be flipping your ruler as you go across. And then you'll have a few little scraps that you can discard and you'll have a whole bunch of little hexagons for the center of your block. Then we're going to cut the background pieces that go right here. So those are also very easy to do. We're going to lay out our two and three quarter inch strip then we're going to line up our ruler and establish that 60 degree angle. So I'm just going to cut on that side. Then we're going to set this ruler aside and we're going to take out our 6 by 12 ruler. 
and we are going to measure over five inches from this cut angle. So I'm not using the lines on the mat and I'm going to lay my ruler at an angle so my five inch line is lined up with that cut edge and then you're going to make a cut like so. So that's how easy it is to cut that next piece. And again you can just continue across your strip cutting those pieces until you have enough pieces to make all of your blocks. So now we're going to work a little bit on the assembly. So let me grab a couple of those pieces here. And you can take your iron and get rid of that little crease from when you made or when you were cutting your little hexagons. So I'm going to grab my little design board here and we have this piece and this piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay them out like this and then we're going to fold them so they are right sides together and then this is the seam that we're going to sew. So the, the tip of these two points line up nicely so it's really easy to see how to align those but at the bottom we have what's called the little valley so hopefully we can catch that on camera but there's a little bit of a gray triangle sticking out at the bottom and you have your white angle and where those two intersect is the valley. So I'm just going to take my pen here and put a little marking right there so that you can see a little bit where the valley is and that valley should line up with where your quarter inch seam is. So if you have trouble doing the valley you can take a little marking pen like I did and put a little hash mark so that it's really easy to see for when you're aligning those pieces. You can also use the needle down button on your machine so if your needle is down you can just line it up with that little hash mark and that will help make things line up a little easier. And in the studio here they also have a machine that has um, our uh, well it's the it's called the seam so easy and it's used for typically for doing folded corners and half square triangles and stuff and it's got three lines on it you can also use the lines on that as a reference point for lining up your pieces so you're going to go ahead and sew that seam and then you're going to have a piece that looks like this and you can see we have a nice point here and a nice straight line along here and if your block looks like that then you know that you've done your angles correctly now we're going to get to sewing some of those pieces together. So remember this piece here that we've made? You're going to take that and partially sew it to your hexagon block here. So you see how I've sewn about an inch and a half down? Um, and the reason I have you doing this um, and kind of the inspiration behind this pattern is I first saw some wrapping paper at my niece's um, birthday party and it had these fun hexagon star blocks and I thought they were really cute but it took me a while to figure out how can I come up with an easy technique for making this so you don't have to do any Y seams or anything like that. So the partial seam technique that I'm going to show you now is a, a really easy way to avoid having to do those wide seam, Y seams. So, that little scrap of wrapping paper hung on my bulletin board for quite a while before I figured out how to actually turn this into a quilt block. So that's why I have you starting with this little partial seam. Then you're going to take your next unit here and you're going to again lay right sides together and then you're going to sew this seam and this again fits nicely up at the top here where the corners intersect but down here you have that little valley that you can practice again and then you're going to press and you're going to keep working your way around the block until you get to this point here where you have just this uh, final seam yet that has to be sewn. So that's why it's called the partial seam technique because now we're going to go and finish this seam and then that sets that piece into the hexagon. So um, like I said, so much easier to do than you would think and the pieces are large so they're easy to work with. And um, go ahead and sew that seam shut and you're going to make three blocks like that for doing the runner. And now we're going to do the background with the red. So I'm going to walk you through how we're going to cut the pieces that go on the corners here. So we are going to start with a rectangle like so. And I'm going to take two of them and lay them wrong sides together. Then we are going to take our ruler 
and you're going to use the outside dashed line right here, not the center line, so that it adds your quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to cut along here and we're going to flip the ruler and if you have a rotating mat, that's probably pretty handy right now so you don't have to do this kind of more awkward cut that I'm doing. You'll have a little scrap in the middle that you can get rid of and that's how easy it is to cut your little triangles. And you can see I've got mirror images and the reason we need that is because of course you're going to sew one here and you're going to sew one over here. So you're going to lay right sides together and use that valley technique that I talked about for attaching. And then after you sew and press those, you can go ahead and add the last two. And now your block becomes a rectangle, so you're no longer working with those 60 degree angles. Then you can add the sashing strips like so, and then that would get sewn to the rest of our ruler. So that's how easy it is to work with those 60 degree angles. So um, again, if you're looking to check out the fabric, it's Winter Wonder. This is in the On, Run, On the Run Again book. And uh, thank you all for watching.